Hi, I'm here today with Kishav Sandi of FedEx at Fortune Green 2010. And Kishav, tell me about uh, the new FedEx uh, vehicle you got here. Well, this is an all-electric vehicle where the mobility is powered entirely from stored energy in a battery. We do not have an internal combustion engine in this vehicle. All the energy that's stored in a battery, 80 kilowatt hours of energy, feeds into an AC motor. And that AC motor, which is powering the rear wheels, is what drives this vehicle. Huh. Okay. Can you tell us about the, uh, the story behind this? He drove this from Chicago to uh, California, correct? Yes, we drove it around the iconic Route 66. Route 66. The reason why we chose Route 66 was because just like Route 66 revolutionized American transportation a few decades ago, we feel this vehicle is going to revolutionize short haul transportation again. We'd like to minimize and even eliminate our dependence on foreign oil, and having a fully electric vehicle helps us achieve those targets. So you went from Chicago and all through these little towns, stopping at ice cream shops, you were telling me? and <laughs> we, we drove along all major cities, small towns, around across Route 66. We stopped at uh, a university also on the way over here just to show it to the grassroots of America and introduce to them that, yes, there is a fully functional electric vehicle available today. A fully functional electric vehicle which can deliver packages on a complete day for us which can haul about 3,300 pounds and can travel 100 miles on a single charge. Interesting. Well, let's see some of the vehicle here. Well, the ingress to the vehicle is from the side over here. And all that feeds or activates this vehicle is an I button. We tap the I button. Once the I button is recognized, we have all different drivers which starts activating. Uh -huh. So it's just like your computer system which starts activating multiple drivers being energized and that's how the vehicle initializes itself. And once all the drivers are initialized, the vehicle is ready to be put into drive and we can drive away. The transmission, even though the transmission shift looks like conventional uh, shift over here, it's not really a conventional shift mechanism. It's basically how we energize the motor to go forward or how we energize to go in reverse. Huh. So the look and feel of the transmission is like a conventional one, but that could be easily accomplished by some other sort of mechanism like a touch touch button on a screen. Now you have a touch, interesting touch screen here that indicates the, uh, the, the electricity used so far and the amount that you have, correct? Yes, it indicates the state of charge. The dial on the right hand side gives us the state of charge. It shows one being 100% fully charged, has 80 kilowatt hours, can drive 100 miles. As we progressively deplete the battery, this arc keeps on releasing. Ah, okay. And on the left is the uh, standard speedometer, the correct? The left is the standard speedometer. And again, this is just an LCD display. It is, It substitutes a regular instrument panel, but it's just an LCD display in this case. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see the, uh, the charging unit, if we could. The batteries on this vehicle are basically underneath the entire cargo floor. Okay. All 80 kilowatt hour battery banks are underneath the cargo floor. And charging port in this case is on the side over here. This is what plugs into an off-board charger which is connected to the utility supplies. That's the plug on your wall. So the plug on your wall feeds into an external charger which comes and feeds into this. So we're charging this using DC right now here. Okay. And tell us about the infrastructure and the uh, load balancing aspect because obviously you can't introduce so many vehicles into a market at one time without having some type of uh, potential effect on the grid or yeah. etc. Well, the ultimate way to go with that is having a smart grid. And we have talked about, there will be talks about tomorrow here also about smart grids. But in the absence of a fully smart grid, what we are doing is this vehicle will require a level 2 SAE charger, which is 220 volts up to 30 amps kind of a supply. But we are working on time circuits. In our LA locations, we'll have time circuits where we'll charge off peak. And also, we'll like to balance out the various phases into a facility. We have worked with the, the utility companies in identifying which phases are the ones which have some 
potential to add on uh, equipment of this uh, requirement. Each one of these, when it's charged, will require somewhere between 10 to 12 kilowatts. That, in some cases, is a typical household. So once we're adding requirements on that scale, we like to make sure that we're doing it at off-peak hours and also we're balancing the load into the facility. So tell us about the current situation right now. You have a number of vehicles in Los Angeles, correct? We have we have 10 of these operating in the UK for at least a year. Oh, wow. We have five that are going into Paris and we have four of these that will be at an LA station. Nice. So uh, where can we learn more about uh, this fantastic vehicle? Uh, do you have a website? or? Uh, well, you can track the history of this iconic uh, Route 66 journey at fedex.com slash electric, and there will be hyperlinks to learn more about this vehicle. Great. Thanks, Kishav. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.